Um, this is the take two of 4-H and we're gonna do it on county contest. We'll have me, Zane and Sarah um, with different portions. And you guys can ask questions at the end or as we go along if you have any. Um, so resources for county contests. So county contest prepares 4-H youth for district contest, which is for novice and junior 4-H members and state conference um, for senior 4-H members. Contests should follow your district's handbook. Um, and this handbook provides information on what will be available at the district contest level and what novice and juniors will experience for their contest. Um, an important note is that novice and junior members will experience uh, different levels of difficulty. So our novice younger members will experience, um, maybe they'll have to do judge 20 items or identify 20 items and the juniors, since they're older, do maybe 25. Um, so I was gonna show everybody the district handbook. So is it showing the web page now? Oh yeah. Nope. Okay, hold on. I'm telling you it'll lag. How about now? It's yep, you're good. Cool. Um, so this is where it'll lead you to the different districts. Um, I'm part of the northern district, so I'll click that one. And then I'll open up the district handbook. Um and then I was just gonna briefly go over livestock skillathon because that one's pretty self-explanatory. So go to page. Okie dokie. So for skillathon, um, It'll tell you the purpose, the eligibility, general information. Um, so identify photographs of 20 livestock breeds um, for the breed identification. These are all the general areas that a contest could be on. And then they have very specific. So novice I'll identify from photographs or actual equipment, the proper name for 20 um, of the equipment used. Um, and then it talks about how many juniors do. There are some general rules that are listed here. Then there's also pages that you can utilize at your county contest um, for all of the different uh, contest areas. And you can pull straight from these and print so it is easier for you. So I will stop in Zane if you want to continue. Yep, so um, thank you. Uh, so when um, is a good Thing to bring up. So the deadline for most of the district and state contest is uh, early to mid June. I know in the northern district, ours is usually the second week of June, um, sometimes the end of that first week. So we usually try to schedule our county contest the very end of May or the very first week of June. Um, it works out good because most kids are out of school, so we can actually have the contest during the day and not during the evening. Um, and then also, if you're doing a county contest specifically for shooting sports, which uh, a lot of counties do. Um, making sure that you know those deadlines as well. The registration deadline for the state shoot is in May. Um, so April is probably the month that you're gonna need to have county contest shoots uh, for shooting sports. Um, the length of the contest is dependent on your county size and participation level. I know the three of us presenters, one of us has one day contest, a two day contest, and one of us has a three day contest. And so it really just depends on what you guys can um, manage and how many kids you're gonna have. But also, you know, if you don't want to have 15 contests on one day, you could also space it out and make it a little bit easier on yourself as well as some of the kids competing in multiple contests. Okay, so um, where is one that uh, you guys probably don't need a lot on? You guys all know where you're doing programming in your counties. Um, but some things to think about, um, you know, if, if you're opening this up to the entire county with all different aspects of projects being involved, um, you might have a little bit more participation than just a single project meeting or a project uh, activity. Um, and to remember, if you're doing something like horse judging, you'll probably need an arena. If you're doing favorite foods, you're going to need uh, a kitchen or preferably stovetop or um, space to lay everything out. Um, preferably it is nice to have the contest all at one location, but having specific contests elsewhere can help ensure the contest will be ran correctly. Um, I know here we usually do our talent contest at the amphitheater at the college. Um, so it's kind of up on a stage and the kids certainly have fun doing that. 
Um, so how uh, the biggest thing is volunteers um, as agents. I, I know myself, it's very, very overwhelming with all these contests and a lot of it stuff that we have to learn ourselves in order to teach. Um, so finding volunteers to help and, and, you know, even do the little things like run cards, um, tabulate scores, check people in really can benefit and uh, make this uh, a non-stressful event. Um, some counties use county contests as an official qualifier. I know uh, me and Sierra do um, for district and state contests, while others do not. That is totally up to your guys' uh, agents or, you know, in your guys' counties. Um, we use it because, you know, we might have 10 kids trying to go to a specific contest, whereas we can only take eight. So we just need to decide who's going to be on team one, team two, and, and who's going to have to unfortunately sit out. So it really just depends on the participation size in uh, each uh, certain project. Contests need to follow the outlines and contest rules given in the district handbook, like Sierra said, um, and state rules. However, some tweaks can be made to your contest that work for your county. Um, some examples, you know, last year, like the Livestock Skill Pond was a good one. Um, you know, some of my novice kids were little, I didn't put up 20 bills, I put up 10. I cut it in half, and so it was a little bit faster for them. That's kind of an example, I guess. Um, and then finally, contests can utilize actual materials, um, but you can also use pictures or PowerPoints for identification sections of contests to save on contest purchases. Um, so instead of going out and buying meat to identify, or if you don't have feed, or if you don't have tools, um, pictures work great. And honestly, uh, I know at the state contest and the district uh, contest last year, they used some PowerPoints for some of the contests and even on iPads, and it worked out awesome. I know the kids really enjoyed it. Um, some examples are like actual plants for horticulture, which works great, um, or online livestock judging platforms, which I know I've used in the past as well. I'm sure a lot of people have. Um, allow time for youth to be able to participate uh, if they want. Um, so this is a big one. I know you guys have all those kids that are probably overachievers and they want to do 10 things. Um, just let them be able to sign up. If they want to do 10, just let them uh, plan it out to where um, it's all going to work and, and provide incentive. Games, workshops, prizes, and fun um, will get more youth to the event. At the end of the day, um, you know, we're all competitive, but hopefully they're, they're growing and learning as individuals and citizens. So um, getting them there is going to make them better for each member. So some of those fun things might actually get them in front of us and hopefully make them better for each members. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go over a couple of things um, in terms of what to expect. And I'm sure there's a lot more seasoned agents in here that are listening in that have even more um, uh, two cents to offer in terms of what, what can be expected at county contests. Um, so just some things that I've experienced um, and, and what can vary are, you know, nobody showing up. Um, I think it was my first year here. There hadn't really been one um, really strong for a couple years. And so hardly anybody came. Um, but, but be prepared for that. You might, you know, be planning for a big county contest, but everyone happens to be sick that day or something came up. And so you might not have the volunteers that you had planned on. You might not have the leaders or parents there to help you, or even the amount of kids that you had planned for. Um, on the opposite end of that, you might have a lot more people show up than you expected. Um, you know, uh, like the last couple of years, we've had practices that lead up to our county contest. And so, you know, I would expect, okay, these five kids will probably come and be interested in livestock. These four might come and be interested in this, but then all of a sudden 34 show up. So definitely just be prepared with extra copies and extra materials and things for them to, um, so, so that the contest can um, uh, accommodate extra individuals coming as well. Um, also with that, you know, we let, a lot of our senior kids go through the contest too, just for an additional practice, um, maybe leading up for, you know, to state 4-H conference or something. And so uh, that definitely kind of makes those numbers go up as well. Um, definitely expect a ton of questions because you're, even if you are practicing, you know, your county contest is gonna be kind of your first real life contest where you're going through all the motions of a contest. So it brings up a lot more questions that maybe hadn't come up even if you were had just been practicing. Um, 
And then, you know, we typically hold our county contest at our county fairgrounds. And so we've even had like public and community people stop in and have questions as to what's going on and what we're doing that day. Um, I've seen county contests sort of um, inspire uh, leaders and or youth um, to, in terms of um, different avenues and in, in which they can get into. Um, you know, we, like Zane said, kind of open it up and let kids almost use it as an exploratory type of a contest. Um, you know, they might look over and, and see wildlife sitting over there. And even though I may have told them about wildlife, they didn't really realize what it entailed. And, oh, there's, you get to look at wings. Well, that's cool. And so I think it, it you know, just offers an opportunity for them to really explore a lot of different things um, and look at the options and contests that are available. And then on the opposite end of that, um, you know, I've definitely seen disinterest in different contests that a kid maybe had been working on or studying for or whatever, you know, they actually go through the motions of the contest and then they decide, oh God, I do not want to do that contest. It really was not what I expected it to be. And I don't think I'm going to like that or am I going to be great at it or whatever the reason may be, but um, I've definitely seen that too. And so, you know, just help those youth uh, find a different area that they may be interested in. 